G'day folks, Rod Moore here. Welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Got a great little episode for you this week, which I think you're going to enjoy. It's of a little fishing village that I visited in North Wales um, some years ago, and the tide had gone out, and all the boats had become uh, stranded in the you know the low tide. I'm going to start out with a little flat brush, and I'm just using the Artilia Interactive Paints. We've got our blue and our red. Ultramarine blue and permanent crimson or alizarin crimson and I'll just take a little touch of water just to loosen that paint up and so step one of the more method of painting is getting our drawing in now that doesn't mean we're going to become expert drawers what we're going to do is just place big shapes into the uh, canvas here so the first big shape that we really want to get in or the first sort of you know, thing to focus on in this particular case, I think is going to be this yacht and where that's going to sit. So probably runs more that way. So we'll just place that in. Now don't don't fret if you don't get a perfect drawing of it. Obviously, your drawing skills are a big advantage when you're wanting to learn to paint. But the way we teach you to uh, get started painting here at More Art School means that you can. As long as you can draw a couple of big shapes like I'm doing here, you can pretty well get started without being a great drawer. That doesn't mean I recommend not learning to draw, because I think that's a pretty important skill as you progress as an artist. But what it does mean is you can get started without being a brilliant drawer. As long as you can get those, you can identify firstly what the big shapes are, and you can get them in the right places, which is not always easy. Then you can, uh, you know, achieve good results with your painting. Okay, it's going to have a mask there. I won't put the mask in at this stage. So as you can see, I'm not going for a perfect representation. We just want to create an impression of it. And um, if you if you take that approach, where we're just really looking to get a feel for uh, our shapes here or our objects. Um, then you know it'll be a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable I think as you're starting out. As you progress you might want to get more accuracy, more detailed, up to you. I've always preferred more of a impressionistic sort of feel to my paintings in a very loose style like I like luscious brushwork and and uh, and more of a feel in a painting rather than um, a painting that's been, you know, controlled and too uptight. Um, so it's a personality thing more than anything. So as you can see, like with these little buildings here, I haven't attempted to get them exactly as in the photo. Again, because this is a little demonstration and we are more interested in getting um, just a bit of a indication of them in. So there's a few bushes and things in front there. We've got a nice little pine tree waving away in the background there. Okay. So this is a good little painting because there are a number of elements in here which are important to the success of the painting, such as these bushes that are gonna sit in front of uh, the buildings there. But the other really important aspect of it is We've got these distant hills here, and um, they add a really nice element to this painting because there's a lot of depth there and a lot of, um, there's the water there. You know, it's a reasonably simple little composition. The most challenging part is getting perspective right on this boat, which I haven't quite got my drawing right there, but that's okay. Um, so we've got this big shape here. We've got the shape of these buildings with the trees. We've got this foreground shape here. We've got this distant hill shape, and we've got our sky. So about five or six big shapes. And this is what I would really try and get my students to really focus in on. That when you look at a photo like that, it's overwhelming with detail. So you have to bring all the shapes together and, and clump shapes together and think of them as being one mass area there, right? And then when you start to think of it like that, painting becomes a lot easier and it becomes more enjoyable because then you've got a process to work with. So as a drawing, it's not designed to be 
frameable or anything like that. It's just designed to say, okay, this is where I think we need to put these big shapes. And this is roughly what the shape is. In our blocking, which is our next step, we'll start to bring these a little bit more to life. Okay. And then in the step three, where we start to refine and, and develop it further with details and highlights is when we'll start to pull it all together and, and really form up these shapes. So let's get on to step two. Okay, let's have a look at step two now. We need to start blocking in our tones and our shapes. And I think what we'll do is we'll start off with the boat and we'll just get a, some basic tone blocked in. Um, there's this nice red, on, it's a dark red, and it gets even darker on this back um, part of the boat there. I'm not even sure what that's called. Uh, so what we'll do, it's gonna be mostly lizard and crimson, and then we'll add in a little bit of that ultramarine blue to get that dark okay and then we can paint that in there like so and then there's a little bit of it that dark just there okay and then we need to just get a little bit lighter with that and probably lizard and crimson is now I'll add a touch of white don't add too much of the white because it'll make it go a little bit pink but a touch of the white will just lighten it up enough like so, there's a little bit there, and then it runs around about there along that part there. Okay, so what we want is this little bit here to be a little bit darker than the one in front, it's, it's in more shadow. Okay, so that's good. So I'll just give that brush a quick clean. So step two, it's important that we make the right assessments of um, value mostly, okay? So that's gotta be a little bit darker than that. It's probably not dark enough, so we may reassess that when it dries. We'll, we'll wait until it dries. Now this tone here is tempting to think that that's white, okay? So we'll start with white, but it's not, it's not white. What it is, it's, a, it's white in shadow, okay? So the best way to create our shadow will be with a little bit of blue and a little bit of the red. Okay. And that gives us this nice mauvey tone, which is probably not a bad tone for us to represent white in shadow here. And again, we'll block this in and then we'll reassess it once it's, this step's had a chance to dry. You can see I just clipped into my red there, so take some more red and just Concentrating as I work on these details here. Along this wall here, we've got darks. So let us, I'm going to push it just slightly to the cooler side, a little bit more on the blue side. And I can use that dark now to just shape the back of that boat there. Okay, so this is a wall that. It's like a harbour wall. Okay, a little bit more blue again. And we're just gonna find where that sits in here. Now in reality that has rocks and things in that wall which we will build up the detail on that. So, so now we come to these buildings here, and what I'm going to do is just push those into a grey. Okay, maybe a little bit redder. Yeah, just a murky colour is what I'm sort of thinking. Add a little bit of white to it. Maybe a bit bluer. 
why am I thinking a bit bluer? So that's a bit cooler by adding the blue in. And I'll lighten up the values. Just, you know, to push it back a little bit into the distance. Okay. So, it's too close to the bushes. I want there to be a, a good separation to those bushes. So, I'll pull out the paint in my brush because it was getting too much paint in there. I'll take a good swipe of the blue, good swipe of the white. I'm looking for a bluey grey, but not too light in value because we have to put in our um, distant mountains there. And I think that's not a bad little tone there for them. And I'm just going to do them all pretty much in one colour. We'll add different features to them, a few little details. So that's that rear wall, we're gonna add a splash of light onto that, but we'll start out with our dark. Okay, remember we, the way we teach the acrylic painting here is like oil paints. The same approach we do with oil paints, where you paint your darks in first, and your lights go on as highlights over the top of those darks. Okay, so that's sort of a classic approach to oil painting. Okay, now I'm just going to go a little bit redder for these roofs in here. I'm going to need more paint. So I get more blue, more red, a little bit of yellow, more white. Okay, now that red's too punchy, it's too strong, so get more blue into it. Around about there, and then we'll lighten that back. back just a little touch more so that leaves us now with our distant mountains here so I'll take this remaining blue we'll get some white a little touch of the alizarin crimson in there probably wants to be more on the blue side And you can see that sitting back nicely. A little bit fiddly around the trees, but just work your way through it. Again, you know, don't fuss too much about that top edge of you uh, of those hillside there because we can reshape when we put the sky in. On the dark side, so yellow ochre and uh, lizard and crimson, a chunk of the white. So we, you know, we're going to make this a earthy sand tone. We can always lighten it back later on. Okay. And let's just work that in. So take the opportunity to just pull back that shadow a little. Notice I'm blurring up against that edge of that retaining wall. There. I'll come in and get those fiddly bits in a moment with smaller brush. Okay, that's 
That's not bad. Just bury the tone up a little. So I've darkened it really as well. I've done I'll put a little bit more red and yellow into it, and I'll just darken it into the bottom here. A little touch of blue here and there just to keep the interest there. And then I'll come back to that lighter version of it. Something like that because I need to bring that in around the boat. I don't want it to be too dark further away there. Take a big swab of that white. I wouldn't take all of it, I should put it down there actually. Um, a little bit of the blue for the moment. Okay. I'll just get a little touch blue up in one corner here. And you can see I've got the brush loaded up there. That's okay, I don't mind that for doing a big area like this. If it was a smaller area, I'd want to wipe that brush back and give myself a chance to be a bit more refined and subtle with it, but big area like the sky here, I want lots of paint in the brush. I want that paint to be nice and loose, and if I'm only using a thin amount of paint, then it, uh, it will dry too quickly. It won't be very pliable, you know, it won't be able to move it around make it do what we want it to do. So with a lot of paint on the brush, we can create some nice luscious textures and get some movement. See how I'm moving the brush around? Well, those brush marks will show in the paint and uh, add some really interesting detail to people. People love looking at the brush marks the artist left. Get yourself up to this point, um, to the blocking. Notice that there's nothing really defined and detailed at all here. It's just really a matter of blocking in the right tone, in the right place, um, the right values. So if you don't quite understand values and color and how to get to that point, check out our color mixing course. It'll be able to help you. Uh, but you know, most of you should be able to get to this point, no problems at all. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let that dry right off. So this is the key with acrylics that I've found, is that as it starts to dry, it's not a good time for you to work into acrylics. So when it becomes tacky, um, which is sort of half dry, I found it to be the worst possible time to work into the acrylics. So I'll let that dry right off till it's bone dry, and then we'll come back and we'll do step three, which will be our details and our highlights and so on. So I'll see you in the next step. Okay, welcome back folks. We're now going to do step three of the more method of painting, which is of course our details, finishing touches, highlights, really bringing this painting to life. Now, this is all dried off quite nicely and I'm happy with the way it's going. So now we need to start bringing some details into it to really make it uh, work as a painting. So we'll start off with the, uh, some of the details in the boat here. So there's a little dark window, which we'll get in first. Let's mix up our dark with our Lizard and Crimson and Ultramarine Blue there. And that's a little window around right about there. Like so. I'm just gonna darken a little bit underneath there. Just so we've got that clearly in shadow. With a little bit of a dark just in there as well. And we'll contrast that now with some of the highlight. So with the highlight, we'll take the white here, we'll add just a little tiny bit of the yellow ochre just to warm that up. Don't want it too yellow though, so that's too yellow there. So I'll add a good helping of the titanium white back into that. And then we go, got a nice warm tone there. And we're getting highlight hitting on the back of the boat there. Like so. It's also running along the that line there. And a little bit along there. Okay, and then that back 
section in there is getting lots of light just there. Okay. And it's catching the light out the front. And a little bit along the top there. So we're just starting to build up our light patterns now to just to balance off against our darks that we've already got in the boat there. And then we'll come in with some more details on that in a moment. Let's get a little bit of highlight happening on this guy as well. And then we've got some different rocks and things that are in this retaining wall. So we'll just mix up an orangey earthy tone. We'll get a little bit of white into that. And let's just see if we can create some rock shapes in here. Leave plenty of that shadow tone in there as well. I'm probably a little bit too red. I'll lighten that off a bit and I'll get a bit of that into it. That's a better tone. And I'm just making little rounded sort of rocks here. Just on the side where the light would be catching. Okay. There's going to be a fair bit of it, the rocks in shadow. So underneath there, I'm just doing that a little bit more muted. And that now starts to give us the impression of a nice rocky wall in there. So now we'll come to our trees. And I won't fully do the trees just yet because I want to introduce our booster color yellow, but we'll get some of the trees in. Make that one a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's a bit of a mid-tone happening there. And we can easily put highlights on that as well. Yeah, blue and our red. And what I want to do is just start to establish a bit of a shadow under the eaves there, like so. Okay, then Take a little bit of this tone and in fact why don't we make one of these just a little bit lighter just so we break up that wall a bit okay so i'll make that middle one like so we can then make the distant one don't want that to be too light yeah, more like that there we go Actually, it's too close to that one, so I'll just add more blue to it. Okay, that's good. That's a good tone because it's um, close in value to the distant mountains, so it sort of doesn't jump out too much. <laughs> and we've got one that's sort of a little bit on the white side, but we don't want to paint it white. Just mute that back. So I want to do a yellow ochre and white to get a, um, a light tan sort of color. And then to mute it back, I added the other two primary colors in, the blue and the red. Okay. And that grayed it back. So that's probably a little bit too bright, I think. Let me just get some bluey gray into that. Yeah, that's better. And if you want, you could run a bit of shadow effect there. Okay, now let's get some windows in. We've got a 
larger palette knife here. What I want to do is just get in some um, more sandy sort of colours into this dry harbour where the, the um, tide's out. So the harbour's low tide. Okay, so I've got this sort of pinky orangey tone, but what I want to do is let's just see what will happen if we just use the palette knife. Not everywhere, but here and there just to get more of an earthy tone there. Now the reason why I think this is not a bad idea is because this is a bit lighter and I want to get that against the dark. Okay. And all that, that paint I've mixed up, it's not a perfect mix, deliberately. See all the broken colour in there? It's actually really important because it adds texture and variety into what we're painting. Sand quite nicely. Come in here with some darker tones in there. Get some loose paint there. And it's important to know where we're going to start and finish. So we're going to finish there and we're going to start around about there, I believe. Let me just check here. Yep, that looks about right. So That was a little bit rough. I could have used a mull stick or something to that effect to get that in a bit neater, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll just um, hide the effect of that a little. And then the first thing I'll do is take some of our highlight tone and I'll just run it along, along there. Few other darks in there as well to get some of those happening. So there's something hanging off there. We've got these uh, tie ropes hanging off from there. It's all about trying different things and if you're not happy with it, making some adjustments. So I think that's better. That's working better. I've still got a few little subtle rocks here and there placed around, but they're not as dominating as what I just had it as. So I'm happier about that. And I think that's about where we'll leave it, folks. I think it's a uh, captured a nice little feel. It's a, obviously it's a you know warm winter's day, and you've got this cool sky, but you've got this light clipping on the uh, the dry harbour bed there, and this little uh, yacht that's stranded along with the dinghy and a little village soon. I think it's quite a nice little subject, and certainly one to have a go at. Um, follow the steps. Looks like there's a lot of detail and a lot of work in this one. Um, and then maybe there is compared to what we normally do, but if you follow the steps along in this uh, video, then I've got great confidence that you'll be able to create something along those lines as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Learn to Paint TV. Make sure you check out all the other episodes at learntopaint.tv. I'll put the address underneath me here, learntopaint.tv. And register for a free course where we go into a lot more detail about 
this approach to painting at learntopaint.academy. Once again, the address is underneath me here, learntopaint.academy. So look forward to seeing you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Until then, happy painting and cheers for now.